Welcome to episode 60 of the Movie Lighthouse, shining a light through the fog of film. My name is James. I'm Laurie, 47 years of age, Capricorn. And I'm Wyndham, also 47 years of age, but not a Capricorn. Ah. Well, I am James, I'm 46 years of age, and oh, I'm not going to tell you my star sign because I don't want to be uh, my identity stolen. Oh, what have I done? Exactly. <laughs> right, how are you doing, guys? Very well. Episode 60. Yes, six nice, zero. Nice yeah. round number. Oh, I will actually say, don't go in the toilet for a bit. Oof. Leave it oh. a while. Let's just say leave it a while. <laughs> was, that your, was that your Christmas doings? It was a very rich your Christmas. Body. I've, had, I've had to sit down and grow a little moustache and go, jacuzzi, and I'm pointing at the brulee or garlic what's it called Busson. and i did the math and i think we opened it on christmas eve <laughs> i had a little bit a minute ago that didn't well, work so uh, that's an excuse for a red wine i have a red wine to take okay yeah. well we're not really going to talk about christmas because that's no um but what we are going to talk about um, sorry i've made a new i've made a cake Ooh, I what kind of cake with them it's a toffee cake hmm. But it nice? I really shouldn't have eaten it before I started talking. Is it any good? That's no, great. Does it have a sunny no. bottom? No. How good? Um, anyway. Um, so what we are going to talk about, I thought, is mm. a little reflection on 2023. So we brought or three 22. films to the table each to talk about. I'm sure some of them will overlap. And then we're going to think a little bit about the future and a couple of other little things. Um, so, but before we get into that, um, did anybody watch any other, like any Christmas films over Christmas? Is there anything that spotted you took your fancy? I think I talked about it. Spirit, Spirited <clears throat> before Christmas, the Will Ferrell, Ryan Reynolds. You did of talk Scrooge. about that. You're not allowed to talk about it again. So that was it for me. Didn't I... watch anything else. Ah, what I did watch, actually, I watched the entirety of the US office, nine seasons. Jesus Christ. 20 odd episodes per season. I watched that between mid December and new day after New Year. Christ, Christ, that is a lot of TV. That must have cleared up your ex no end. <sighs> it's it's actually put me off TV. So this year, one of my I want less TV in my life. Right. I've done and it. No, Thank God we're not reviewing mean? TV, eh? Exactly. Because I, uh, well, let's just talk a little bit about TV because I watched the whole series of the US Ghosts, which um, is like 26 episodes as opposed to like we have what six, do we, or yeah. something? Yeah, much shorter. And actually, they did quite a good job of filling them up. They, <laughs> they, they, yeah, they do all right, but it's, it's just they are lacking. There's something lacking. It's a lot quicker, a lot faster paced, but it's just not as funny. Characters aren't as lovable. That, well, I, I, they've grown on me a little bit. Well, I mean, you know, whatever episodes it, I've only done three to be fair. So, yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but I think the series of the year has got to be um, what's its face? I can't remember. And the or, name, but yeah, and Did you or watch it is... with them. Oh, no, Did you and know? now it will be lost to me forever. Why have you not got Disney Plus anymore? Oh no, that's yeah, it. we do. TV. But I'm, I'm, I'm kicking the TV. Yeah. Why, why do you just pretend it's a really long film? <laughs> Kick the TV and do something less boring instead. Exactly I think that's that. what the rules are. Yeah. Did um, you? Andor is really good. Again, we have already talked about it, but it's well, not the last I... three episodes. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, so I have. Oh, did you mean the now. last three episodes of our podcast? Because we've definitely spoken about it in the last three episodes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's really good. However, I would uh, challenge you to say, is it the series of the year? Now, Guillermo del Toro uh, mm. is, uh, what's it called? The Casket of Curiosity or something like that. Mm. Um, I can't remember exactly how many episodes there are. I think there could be like eight, maybe 10, something like that. I think it's eight. Um, but not all of them are amazing mm. but the four or five that are amazing that are peppered through the the eight are fucking amazing it's really really good have, have they got nazis are the, are, are the nazis in it 
Are there Nazis in it? I'm trying to think if there's a, a Nazi episode. There is only one episode actually that I didn't haven't seen it in, in its entirety, and that that's uh, starring Ron Weasley, whoever what his Robert Grint or whatever his name is. Rupert Grint. Rupert. I think. There you are. So that may have Nazis in it, but I can't remember it. All right. Well, that's quite a nice segue because um, I want to talk about Del Toro. Yeah. Mm. Because uh, one of the films that I bring to the table, it's not one of my favourite films of the year, but it is one I watched and I, I do think it warrants talking about. And that is... Um, Del Toro's... <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, Dumbo. I believe you did that. Uh, yes, it, it, it's Pinocchio. I want to tell you a story. It's a story you may think you know, but <laughs> you don't. Over there! What is that? Papa! <gasps> it speaks! He's just a puppet! No, I'm not! I'm a real boy! <laughs> People are sometimes afraid of things they don't know. I don't understand. Ah, we have found him, our star. Everyone shall love you and call your name Pinocchio. Pinocchio! Has anybody seen this film? No. Oh, my God. There's a lot of hype about this film. Oh, well. Years and years and years and years. I... A kid's film? No, not at all. I mean, it's uh, it's so dark, mm. but for dark's sake. I mean, I don't know who this film is aimed at, really. Um, I thought it started quite well. Um, but, you know, uh, we open with um, Geppetto being very happy with his son, Carlo. And they're in the local church building the effigy of Christ um, as, a, um, as the Nazis fly over and bomb the church and, and uh, kill Carlo. And blew, mm. You know, and, and the image of Christ is destroyed. And then, um, you know, years of unhappiness pursue until and Pinocchio turns up, who he is, really doesn't want to be there for the whole time. Um, quite an annoying little puppet for all intents and purposes. Um, but again, it's littered with references to, in fact, we even see the Duce, which um, from, uh, who was uh, the leader of the Italian front, Nazi front, um, he, he's like a character in it and stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's it's just littered mm. with war and Nazis, and I really don't understand why. I don't. I just well, it's certainly quite, not quite clearly. He's he's not making your traditional kind of kids film here, is he? Quite clearly, he's the kind of it's almost like what he's done, what he did with Pan's Labyrinth. You know, he had that. Yeah, very well, I don't think that much of that really, to be honest. Oh no, but Pan's at least Labyrinth I could handle good. that. But it seemed it didn't seem such a shoe in. I don't think there's any need. I don't. Why? Why do you have to have um, the backdrop of the Nazis for the story of Pinocchio? I don't get it. Yeah, um, and it, it was just and <laughs> and look, spoiler warning. I'm going to tell you kind of at the end, which isn't really a spoiler, but at the end, you know, there's a whale bit and they get out and then they all go back and they all live happily ever after. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we see Geppetto die. And then we see this other you character. You said spoiler, die. didn't you? You said that, didn't you? And then we see the, the cockroach, which is, you know, like the conscience die. Jiminy Cricket. It, well, he's oh, not cross. like Jiminy Sebastian. And then uh, Pinocchio walks off into the world and dies. No, he doesn't die. That's the thing. He's not even a real boy. Gets woodworm. Um, Does he never become a real boy? Well, I think there was about 20 seconds, which I missed, because uh, it is incredibly long as well. It's like, Was there a these... blue fairy, the blue fairy in there? <sighs> I wouldn't describe her as a fairy, more of a, like a cockroach. <laughs> Centipede, all right. Okay. Yeah. And, was um, it beautiful? Was it, it keeps... beautiful? No, okay. no. Uh, and, um, one of the songs was okay. The rest were, were a bit daft. Oh, it's a musical as well. Not really. There was anyway. Two two songs. So it was kind of a running gag where you McGregor, who was uh, played Sebastian the Conscience, mm. kept starting to do a song and then it kept getting stopped. Is it me or is it just whenever you hear McGregor's name, it doesn't bode well to any <laughs> production? Do you think so? I, I, I really I I want him to name. do well. I like him as a fella, but well, it's he did like... quite well in um, 
I'm Darth Vader. No, I didn't like that. Yeah. Obi Wan, I didn't like that. I, I'm always put in mind of um, his travel. Yeah, film, I like that. Where he gets on his motorbike and he drives long way down, long way up, long way around. You mean the beach? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Was he the in the beach? No, he wasn't he's, in the beach. Wasn't he's he? great <laughs> in the beach. <laughs> oh. Okay, so yeah, Pinocchio. Let's not worry too. I don't think it's done very well either, is it? I think most people are, are in the same mind as you. But yeah, I mean, it, this it doesn't make you feel at least just makes you feel a bit sad with the world, really. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so talking to things about I've seen over the last sort of the few weeks and stuff, I saw Censor. Uh, that was the 2021 film, I believe, that we all were hoping to go to the South Bank in London to see together, but we didn't. Oh, um, yeah. British film. It's about one of the censors back in the 1980s when they're looking at the video nasties and she's censoring. Turns out she's got a bit of a backstory where she's lost her sister uh, and you like, genuinely like a missing person. And then she keeps seeing her in, the, in this particular film these Ooh. bits that she's editing out. It's like, that's my sister. So then she gets lost in this kind of search for her and she goes further and further into the film itself, meets the director, starts becoming part of his next production and it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder. It's good. It's not great, mm. but it's it's good. Atmospheric, British, fun. That was that. That was fun. Censor. So is that one of your offerings, or is that just something you want? No, 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 I just think I saw. I saw a, a film, Ruggerhauer film from the early 90s called Surviving the Game. You ever seen that? No. no. <laughs> Him and, uh, is it, basically, you've got Ice-T, he's like a bum living on the streets. <laughs> and um, Ruggerhauer becomes his mate, whatever, and for whatever reason, he says, look, come, come to my retreat on this remote island. You could be like the handyman. I've got some mates coming over. We're having like a bachelor party thing. Anyway, it turns out Ice-T goes there. He's been naughty, Rugger. Basically, they're all just a bunch of hunting, murderous men. And they send mm. Ice-T off into the woods to survive. And they go hunting after him with rifles and dugs and guns and jeeps. And Ice-T has to survive. And it's got... Oh, who's the work it's of art? Gary Busey in it. Gary Busey in it. <laughs> oh, my God. There's this one particular scene where Gary's talking about him and his dad um, and the way his dad brought him up and made him basically fight and kill his own dog that he loved. And it's such a scene. When you're watching it, it's like it's cinema gold. Um, mm. But then Gary gets killed quite quickly, actually. He's gone. But it, just for that one scene, it's like, Fucking hell. But it's one of those perfect, you know, really left to centre Rugger Hauer films where he's, Rugger's great for shit like that. But yeah, really good fun. Surviving the game. Hmm. All right. That's uh, right on my street. Do you have any uh, kind of films that you watch every Christmas? Like... So many. Eyes Wide what? Shut, Rosemary's Baby, Rear Window, The Birds. Um... Ninth Gate, I mentioned last year. Uh, you I'm watch these every Gate. Christmas? And then, well, yeah. The Woman in Black. That's like a uh, Christmas thing. Yeah, loads of the BBC ghost stories at Christmas. Loads of them. The Stalls of Barchester. Whistle and I'll Come to You. Um, I think you just want to sound cooler than you actually are. No, <laughs> it's <a> Wonderful Life. <laughs> um, All right. Like All right, so Wyndham, why don't you... Uh, Tell us about one of your choices. Okay. Uh, so my first choice is, let me just fire up the quattro. Oh, uh, I watched it trick. relatively, relatively recently. Um, and it is the multiverse movie that we all really wanted. It is everything, everywhere, all at once. This is wow. This is Wang. Mrs. Wang, are you with us? I am paying attention. Now you may only see a pile of receipts, but I see a story. I can see where this story is going. It does not look good. I'm not 
not your husband. I'm another version of him from another universe. I'm here because we need your help. That's, that's yeah. my, my second choice. Fucking um, loved this it film. It is a brilliant film. It's so good. And it, it was, I think I saw it. I, I can't even remember who I've been reading, but I've been reading somebody um, <laughs> who was who was talking about the multiverse and talking about actually, you know, if we open our third eye and if we open ourselves up to the universe and there's all this weird shit going on. Um, and I absolutely loved it. I loved the fact um, Michelle Yeoh is brilliant in it, as she always is. Um, the fact that you've got Jamie Lee Curtis in there as well, yeah. the, the dowdiest, dourest kind of a character. You've got Ki Hui Kwan, who was Short Round. Um, Sorry, what? Short Round? From uh, Indiana Jones. And right. the Temple of Doom. All those days ago. Oh. Um, it's just a really great film and Luke, my my wife was what, sorry was he also in goodies yeah yep. Later. Yes. Oh, Later. Okay. yeah um Lu- louisa had kind she came in about 10 minutes in so she was already fucked there was no way she was going to follow it 10 minutes in <laughs> and then she kept dozing off and waking up and <laughs> making snide comments at the 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 world they go to the universe where everybody's got sausage fingers hot oh fingers. yeah he was just making very snidey comments. And it, it, I remember sitting there just going, well, if you'd watched the whole fucking thing, it would be all right, wouldn't it? Leave it go. I <laughs> have love it, it. Have you seen it, Louis? No, I haven't. Oh, no. It is brilliant. Um, right, so, Wyndham, do you understand it? Yeah. More or less? <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> because, right, so you can, you can, you can go along with it and, and just accept, you know, that there's... Yeah, I, I think I need to watch it again. I would agree with you there, most um, definitely. I don't I, think it's I one of those. I certainly understand the multiverse and the fact that that they somehow get skills from other u- yeah. universes, and then suddenly they have them, a bit like the Matrix. Yeah. But yeah, so it's yeah, exactly that. So it leverages that concept that anything that could be is somewhere in some universe. So then, in some universe, I. I'm a kung fu master. So if I end up in in a different, if me in a different reality ends up in a situation where I could really do with being a kung fu master, they've got this ability to find, like, search the multiverse for the version of me that is that kung fu master and kind of pull the skill in. Yeah, I'm not going to say this is stands up to modern science, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, it is absolutely yeah. wonderful. Uh, especially, uh, especially, there's just this beautiful bit where one of the worlds, the the t- the, the two characters, um, Michelle Yeoh plays a mother, uh, and she ends up on this in this multi in this universe where she and her daughter are just rocks, yeah, and they're rocks with googly eyes stuck on them, and the conversation they have is all in subtitles, and it's just from all these crazy worlds they've been to to suddenly end up in this. They're just two rocks next to me. It's just, I love it. That reminds Absolutely. me of the episode of Moonlighting way back in the day. <laughs> it's, it, I mean, it's about two and a half hours long, isn't it? It's a long yeah. film. But yeah. it's very, for what it is and what it could be, it's quite contained, really, um, in the way, because it could, obviously, it has to be, or it just or it lose its pace or lose its place. But it does pack a lot in. Yeah, I mean the imagination of the person who wrote. Who who did write it? So the writers were Daniel Quad and Daniel Schoon. Of the two Daniels, yeah. Yeah, the two Daniels. Mm. Oh, it reminds it's... me a little bit of. I mean, the, the the story itself doesn't, but the there's a, a an amazing book called the Raw Shark Texts, and it is this weird. It's it's amazing. Thoroughly recommend it to anybody. Um, but it is this weird journey into people's heads and just the weird shit that can happen in there. <laughs> is It's absolutely amazing. But Nothing yeah. weird happens in mine. But it, <laughs> in what, it, your head? Yeah. It sounds good, though, but it wouldn't stand up in a Petri dish, right? Is that what we're saying? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Um, thingy DeGrasse Tyson might sit there going, oh, I don't know about this, but Good. Definitely worth a watch. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right, Laurie, how about you? 
Um, I only just bumped into it actually, and it was off the back of our Canadian correspondent, and he recommended a few films to see. Um, one of them was Flux. Oh shit! He said it was right up the strata, but I couldn't find it for free. But I did find one for free that he flagged called Barbarian, which has kind of been like a yeah, I've seen it. Oh, you've seen it? Good, good. Yeah. It's kind of like a shock hit, apparently. I don't know why it was a shock hit. Maybe it just wasn't on the radar. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. This is 476 Barbary, right? Yeah, I'm renting this place. No, I booked it a month ago. Are you sure you have the right place? Yeah. What are we supposed to do? Why don't you come inside? and we'll call these idiots. Why don't you just crash here? Oh, no. I don't know if you got a great look at this neighborhood, but I don't think you should be out there by yourself. It's dry and there's a lock on the door. By the way, I'm Keith. Tess. You take the bedroom and I'll sleep out here on the couch. called barbarian as well to be honest no i thought that let's figure it out let's unpick it so basically yeah explain what it's all about there's a young lady she's gone on to airbnb she's got to go to this town because she's doing some sort of movie or something she's doing some photo shoots or something on location so she's rented an airbnb she turns up and there's someone already there it's been double booked god damn it so she doesn't know him from a slice of Bousson. And, but for whatever reason, she goes, okay, right, I will stay. And they get on, they have a good night. But it turns out that, yeah, there's a lot more to this place than meets the eye. And then the film just kind of unfolds and escalates, you know, following her for the majority of the time a good halfway through the film and things just get crazier and weirder and weirder. Very fresh, actually, fresh ideas. You really don't know where it's going to go for the majority of the film, but you always know there's that kind of, well, actually, when you, when you, when you look at, when you open the film, it says horror. So, you know, shit's going to go down. Anyway. So yeah, the malevolence is there. Da, 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 da. Um, and then you kind of get halfway through it and then it breaks to another character, the guy from Jeepers Creepers and Drag Me to Hell, forgotten his That's name. That's our boy. Uh, so, sorry, great. the character, I haven't seen it, by the way. I've got the film wrong. Oh, right, okay. He's great in it. Uh, um, plays a bright little twat. And then you kind of follow him, but then the two stories sort of connect. And then again, it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder. And then it ends and it's jolly good fun. Um, is it the best thing that I've seen in 2022? No. Um, I can't. Yeah, but it just, I really liked it. It was good. Barbarian. Hmm. Uh, director, does. by the way, Zach Krieger or Krieger. Has he done anything else? Uh, probably. I'll get back to you. Don't know else. All right. Uh... Well, I've only got one more choice left because Wyndham stole my second one. So, ah. Rick, do you want to go next? Who, me? Um, <clears throat> yes. Uh, my second choice is The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Oh, all right. You've seen that. I just, it's just one of those. I'm, I'm, I'm turned on to Nick Cage. Uh, I know we gave his Vampire's Kiss a bit of a panning, much to your Fuck off. distress. It's brilliant. <laughs> but I just, I just really love it. And I, just the fact he is so. You know, it's, it is so self-deprecating. Have either of you seen it? No, not yet. No, what's it, what's it called again and what's it about? The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Uh, oh, and it is so. Nick, Nick Cage playing Nick Cage. And so he's going through a period in his career when he can't quite get the gigs, and yet he's, he's just getting super excited about the little conversations he's having over lunches in L.A. And he's like, yeah, and then he's auditioning off the cuff in the restaurant, screaming in the producers' faces. And then as they're leaving, they're kind of going, you know, I can do it another way if you want. I can 
He's just really into the art that we know he is. And then he gets, he's getting no work. And then he gets invited to an island for his biggest fan's birthday. But what he doesn't realise is his biggest fan is one of the world's biggest drug dealers and cartel bosses. And so as, as he turns up on the island for this guy's birthday, the CIA or whoever the American agency is, is they're going, is that, is that fucking Nick Cage? <laughs> What's it? And he basically gets recruited by the CIA to infiltrate this guy's compound and get the information. It's, it starts off with him being him, and then it just goes on this weird tangent, and it's, right. it's brilliant. Really, really um, enjoyable. If right, you like I'm, Nick Cage. I'm sorry. I misheard you at the start. I, th- I thought you said Nick Cave, who I <laughs> right. assume is dead. So, uh, He's not. Apparently. Nick Cave's not dead. No? Is he not His dead? Son's dead, no? but we won't talk about that. God damn it. That's terrible. Okay. So, but it's Nicholas Cage you're talking about. It is. About. Yeah, his friends call him Nick. That was probably <laughs> where I derailed it. So is it, um, has he done it again? He has done it again, yeah. On all sorts of different levels of... he he In this film, he's anywhere from like a, a Nick Cage 7 to a Nick Cage 12. <laughs> he's, he's great. And 12 and he's, being Vampire's Kiss, right? Like full-on proper... <laughs> Nick Cage. Uh, who, who else is in it? Bear with me. Um, what's it called? I can't even remember the name. Oh, wait. It's got Pedro Pascal in it. Knew it. Now, as doesn't well. he play the Mandalorian? Yeah. There you go. And he's very good in it as well. He Not plays the. Gig, was it? He plays Javi, who is the the criminal. It's Just in case anyone's funny. interested, uh, in season three of The Mandalorian, mm. Pedro Pascal will be taking off his helmet a bit more. Mm. <laughs> surprise, <Yeah>. surprise. <laughs> oh. He's a good looking guy. But yeah, that's well, my second I one. look a bit like him. No, you look like that guy from the script. Uh, <laughs> try again next year. Right, go on there, Laurie, your number two choice. Number two choice. Um, oh, let me think. Oh, shit. I did make a note. Oh, what is it? Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, <laughs> no, they are. Did you know that the very first assembly of photographs to create a motion picture was a two second clip of a black man on a horse? And that man is my great great grandfather. Great. There's another great grandfather. But that's why back at the Haywood Ranch, as the only black-owned horse trainers in Hollywood, we like to say, since the moment pitches could move, we had skin in the game. What's no, our boy? What's his name? Oh. What's the guy, his face? Are we talking Nope here? Nope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you seen it? Not yet. You mean oh, Jordan Peele? Jordan Peele, our boy. Always makes something interesting. Always has, you know, more than what you see under the surface. A bit more sort of sublimacy, whatever it were, metaphor, that kind of stuff. And he gives us does this tale. Know? Yes, he does. If you want to read into stuff, it's all there. It's all, it's all quite, you know, it's not really that deep. But, you know, he, he presents it in an interesting... Talk me through the rabbits in um, us. In us, I can't really remember us so much. I didn't yeah. really kind of get on with that one uh, as much as I did. Obviously, was it Get Out? Was it called? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was just wonderful. And then Nope, yeah, um, superb. I mean, um, I haven't actually researched, you know, kind of the real dissection of it and that kind of like what's the meaning what's it trying to tell us sort of deliberately and the fact that i haven't really had time i've been too busy on the toilet um (laughs) but uh what i'm kind of gleaming from it i mean on the face value what you've got you've got this family they they have always been for years and years and years horse handlers as it were and they're direct descendants of basically the first man ever captured on moving picture and that was... Oh, well, you kind of give it away. No, I'm not giving anything right, okay. fucking away. Um, 
first image ever caught on moving picture was a black man riding a horse. You just see this horse cantering. You might, you know, you might know it in your mind. Actually, you've always a lot of us have seen that image, the first motion thing ever recorded. So this this guy that was riding that horse was never credited, you know, but a real piece of, you know, cinematic history. Anyway, this family, they are direct descendants of that man and they still run the ranch and all their horses. They pimp out to movies. Uh, like the Scorpion Kings mentioned and the Mummy and all that kind of stuff, but um, shit movies then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know, like like real, you know, they're real working, a real working family, just you know, getting gigs when they can get gigs when they need horses. And um, anyway, so you're on this ranch, ranch, and basically what you have is it's a monster movie on the real face value. There's a UFO, a man eating. UFO that stalks the ranch, hides in the clouds. How do you stalk like a, something that doesn't move? The, the, there's <laughs> one cloud that you realise later on the film hasn't moved. It's just they're always there. And then this, this little uh, uh, UFO will peek out and then it will come out and then it will eat you up. Oh, no, 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 no. And then fly off again back into the clouds. It's mental. It's absolutely bonkers. Well, um, no spoilers, though. <laughs> no spoilers <laughs> at all. Because that's what, it's not what the film's about. Um, but yeah, you on the face value, you've got this, you know, really, you know. I think, look, I think what Jordan Peele does well is throw ideas at something. But yeah. they don't necessarily fit together always and stuff yeah. like that. Um, this one, know. this one does, this, this does work. It is completely completely like you do sit there and think what the actual genuine fuck kind of stuff <laughs> and there's this other story that runs through it as well where you've got this there's this tv series that had this chimpanzee it was like the main kind of character and there was like a family around it so like harry and the henderson's kind of thing but but filmed, tits up, up film, filmed in front of a live studio audience and uh you learn that there was this one particular very famous episode where one of the, it's called Chop, I think it was his name, Chucky or Choppy. Anyway, it's his birthday, the monkey's birthday. And on the set, one of the balloons pop. And basically what the monkey does, it, it kills. It fucking goes on a fucking rampage and bites the faces off all the cast members while the audience is sat there. And you're in the, you're in the actual TV studios as it's happening and, Oh, it's just it's just lovely, and yeah. Well, so what's that got? What's that got to do with the rest of the film? I suspect, and as I say, I haven't read the blurb, and I'm probably completely wrong, but I think the film is about modern day spectacle and the way we look at celebrity and we consume it. We consume fucking people into the. If they stare into the camera, because this 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 UFO looks just like a camera lens, basically. And the, if, if you look at it, you get sucked into it and it eats you up and it cunts you out. But the, <laughs> the <Cuts> guy, <laughs> <laughs> but the guy that was ever first captured on moving picture, he didn't look at the camera. He was uncredited. We didn't know his name and he didn't look at the camera. But it's just, I think it's something about that. I think it's something about the way we consume and feel like we own people via, you know, looking at the telly or them looking into the camera. We kind of, and something, something about that. I think there is a danger that he might start believing his own hype a bit and turn into. There's nothing to believe. No. Well, to be honest, you, you get a, you get a similar kind of feel, you know, Shema Lama in his day, the village and all that, you know, his signs, you know, really great. Signs was, I used to, wasn't a very good film. Oh, I, I like signs a lot, actually, but I, I always used to look forward to his films coming out. And um, when did that his, stop? Uh, when did that stop? I, I loved Unbreakable, the first one. Oh my God, I loved that. Um, I don't know, maybe soon after that, I'm not sure. <laughs> But yeah, it's that it's that similar kind of feel actually. It's like a nowadays shama lemma lemma kind of film. But he's got got much more of a historical. He's definitely obviously got the the black history. That's a big thing for him, and I love I love that as well. Highlights a lot of things you know that I don't always think of. 
So I like his movies. <laughs> I find them quite poetic. Great. Hmm. All right. Um, what number was, was that your second choice, yeah? Hmm. Okay, okay. All right. So um, our final choice. So this is definitely my favourite film of the year. Um, and it's, uh, it's a very small little independent film called Brian and Charles. I never thought I'd make anything as amazing as Charles. You <laughs> built my body. I built his body. My name's Brian. This is my infamous inventions pantry. It's actually a cow shed. Things went a bit topsy-turvy in my life. And I was very alone. Ah, fiddlesticks. That's when I just started making stuff. Any little idea I had, I just made. It's an egg bell, pinecone bag, flying cuckoo cock. So whenever anyone in the village wants to know the time, they can look up in the air and I'll be there. Oh, get back! It's on fire! They don't always work, and the stuff I build isn't for everyone. Well, I'm impressed. Thanks. My new project, I'm building a robot. Didn't look too bad, does he? I wonder what he'll do when I turn him on. Would you like me to give you a name? Tony? Charles? Charles. <laughs> Charles? Charles. You like that name, do you? Hello, Brian. Hello, Charles. It's lovely to meet you. Has anyone seen it? Right, no. No. OK. You cannot watch this film without falling in love with it. And it's kind of hard to explain. Well, it's not hard to explain. It's much easier than the ones we've been trying to explain. Uh, but basically, it's... Um, uh, did, everyone, did anyone see Afterlife with... Yes. Um, Rick and Gervais, yeah? Yeah. yeah. You know the kind of weird uh, guy who works, I think, does he distribute the newspapers? The um, postman? Not the postman. No, he's, he's got like Kevin or Keith or somebody like yeah, that. Yeah, he's got a beard and, you know, yeah. he... David Earl plays him. Yeah. So David Earl um, is um, the main actor in this. Um, and basically, he is an inventor. Um, but not a very good inventor. A weird, kind of weird... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he invents a robot called Charles. And basically, Charles, is has got, like, he finds his head, so it's like an old man's head, and then the body is a washing machine, so it's just a massive cardboard <laughs> yeah. box, basically. And it's just how their, their, their relationship together, and it is so funny. It, it's, it's, it's just brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, you know, I, you just got to watch it. Um, it's, it's just it, going to... Is it heartwarming? It is, isn't it? Come on. It's just really funny. Yeah. It's funny and, you know, it's kind of like Joe's small time mentality. Um, you know, what happens when Charles gets taken away. Um, Charles dancing is just a delight <laughs> to watch. Um, and when he starts getting like he wants to go, <laughs> oh, I can't remember. Um, what's it called? He wants to go to this um island and he keeps getting the name wrong. Oh, it's just it's very hard. And you have to watch it, you have to watch it. It's brilliant, it's brilliant, it's brilliant. So, is it David Earl? He's he was quite famous, well, not famous, but he's kind of not that famous at all, actually, until we started appearing on Vic and Bob. I think he made an appearance and. Did he, that. But he, he played uh, a guy called Brian Gittings, and really well, he's playing Brian in this. Yeah, well, Brian Gittings is his character. You know, big fat jam jar glasses and quite disgusting and quite base uh, comedy. But I always really liked him, and he sent me a message on Twitter. Um, that's some. Um, that's essentially the character he plays in Afterlife, isn't it? Yeah, it must be. Yeah, so that's kind of his main vibe then. Brian Gittins is his... He's a little bit more happier in this. Um, right. And, and, and the robot's called Charles Petrestru. Charles uh, Petrestru. 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 Oh, that's great. It really, really, really is great. Does his thorax um, still function? Can he still put his, like, rods in it? Eh? Can he still clean his rods in the uh, robot? Well, you don't chest? have... You can't really... You don't really... See much of the washing machine. Oh, he's that was brilliant. Plumbing, it's so man. nice. It's such a funny film as well. So yeah, check it out. That is my recommendation. Nice. Mm. Very good. Wyndham. So I'm going to go a little bit left field with this. Oh. 
um, because I've got a list of a few. But actually, I'm going to go with it's a Netflix film. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it is Jonah Hill's documentary called oh. Stutz. S-T-U-T-Z. What's up, Stutz? <laughs> Hi, Jonah. Okay, entertain me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna start by acknowledging how odd this endeavor is. A patient making a movie about his therapist. But my life has gotten immeasurably better as a result of working with you. If it worked for me, maybe it will work for other people. The average shrink will say, don't intrude on the patient's process. They will come up with the answers when they're ready. That's not acceptable. They just listen. And your friends, who are idiots, give you advice. And you want your friends just to listen. <laughs> and you want your therapist to give you advice. Stutz. Stutz. It's the name of his therapist. All and right. it is basically a film where he interviews his therapist. This guy called Stutz. And it is really good it's kind of got jonah hill being you know he, uh, the filmmaker and he's got this contrivance about what he wants it to be and you've got his therapist there who's talking about whatever jonah wants to talk about and then part of the way through you have jonah hill kind of revealing he's really struggling with the project because it is a contrivance he's making everybody He's trying to make everybody think this is happening in one conversation, and yet it's taking two or three years to make this project. Um, it's just really interesting, and, and it it covers a, lo a lot of uh, Stutz's approach, some of his techniques, some of his the exercises he gets his clients to go through. Um, not a kind of typical kind of film, but it's just a really interesting watch. Okay. Is he any good, the therapist? No, it sounds well <laughs> shit. <laughs> Jonah likes him. That's all. We'll, we'll go with that. And that, that's the only information I have. Jonah! Do you reckon only Jonah client. needs a therapist? Or is it just a thing that fucking... Sorry. <laughs> or is it just a thing that actors... No. Or is it just a thing that... Amer... Oh. Or is it just a I thing think, that um, do? I think he, he benefits from having a therapist. Right. All right. So... Um... Like we benefit from having... Um, a, a human, a humanely, what's it called? <laughs> I've no idea. <laughs> what am I trying to say? I'm saying that our podcast is doing a service to humanity, right? Uh, so that right. is could be some sort of therapy for us, maybe. <laughs> I guess right, if, what's if, you want therapy, if you want therapy that doesn't resolve anything, yeah. 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 There you go. <laughs> what's your last choice, Laurie? Uh, it's going to be, and this is quite big for me, because when I was little, uh, Tim Burton made this film called Batman. And I was oh, like, oh, yeah. my God, this is so exciting. And I... From your secret friend. Underneath the bridge. Who? Top of Having a clue. Bobby, come my pet. Let's play a game. Just me and you. Any of this mean anything to you? I got so excited. I made my own VHS like box. I'd like put all that, the cards and the Batman sign and I wrote the back and I never got the video because I was planning to get a pirate video of it and I was going to put it in my VHS box and all that. I was so excited and I loved the film and I started getting into the comics. I started reading Alan Moore's Killing Joke. I read Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. I read Frank Miller's Batman Year One and I was like, oh my God, this is wonderful, wonderful. Got really into it. And I dreamed what, when I was older, when I'm running, in the toy store what kind of batman movie i would make and this has come quite close the batman starring footface patterson <laughs> i really like it it's there is some emo stuff in there that's a bit silly you know they, they kind of play he's a little bit playing to that but i mean that's a nice crossover from twilight actually um 
Which is I that don't how mind it works with actors? Sorry. I don't, well, no, there, I th- maybe <laughs> there is. I don't think he's like that. I don't think he would consciously, but maybe the algorithms of Hollywood would. Um, but I just really like it. It's got a lovely texture to it, a lovely feel to it. It's got a noir about it. It's a little bit, you know, inspired by Seven. Um, Patterson's great. I mean, the opening sequence is like, you know, the typical, who are you? And, you, you know, I'm the Batman, whatever. I'm vengeance and all that. And I believed him. Um, the, 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 the shape of the helmet is just great. And like I say, it's, it's got that real sort of detective um, kind of feel about it. And I've been watching it over the past three weeks now. And I, I don't know, I think it's deliberate. I still haven't got to the end. I'm probably about 10 minutes away from the end. I keep watching it over and over again. And I've been standing very close to the TV as well. Drinking, obviously. But um, I just really, I just really, really like it. I think it's great. Why didn't you just go watch Silence of the Loves instead? Because that's a completely different film. Well, is it <laughs> though? Batman Not thing. really. Because it is basically just like a serial killer story, is it? Really? No, it's a Batman serial killer story mm. thing, isn't it? Is it really the Riddler, though? Um, it... I suppose that's a good question. I mean, but then again, have we really had a def- definitive inception of the Riddler? I don't think we have. I think the Joker, definitely, countless amount of times. The Penguin, oh my God. The Penguin? That's fucking... That's <laughs> fucking um, not a penguin. It's not the Penguin. It is a mob boss. Nothing yeah, it's to a do mob... with a... Yeah, absolutely. But he is the pink. You can see it. You can see it. You can feel it. You can feel no, it. You can't. You and can't it's it um, Colin Farrell, for my God's sakes. Would you believe that? Amazing. I really, really like the film. I mean, it's. I know it's not a. You know, it's not changing the world or anything like that. I just think it's great. There you go. All right. So they're making a Joker too, aren't they? Apparently. Did they? Oh, fine. what with um. Joaquin. Joaquin. Mm-hmm. I wonder if what's his face will play the Batman. It'll turn up. If they brought those two together, I'll be exceedingly happy. I doubt it. Apparently, oh. Lady Gaga is playing Harley Quinn. Really? Uh, apparently. <sighs> She's supposed oh. to be very, very athletic, Harley Quinn. But then again, maybe. I quite it's... like um, what's the name's version. Um. That woman from Summer Bay, wasn't it? Margot Robbie. That's her. <laughs> I thought of something then. What the fuck was it? So is it your favourite Batman film out of all of them? Uh, I think so, yeah. Even though absolutely nothing happens, really. And the Catwoman is shit. No, I don't think she's sick. Oh, no, this is something, actually. A friend of ours is in it. There's a there's a scene where Bruce Wayne goes to the funeral of one of these politicians, whatever it is, and he's walking along and there's this dude sat in the aisles and he goes, blah, blah, blah. He's saying something, like, serves him right. Tosser should have died anyway. And then Bruce Wayne looks down at him and then he looks at him and goes, do I know you? Like that. And he kind of walks away and then the character fades off into the distance. His face goes back into the shadows, as it were. Now, that guy, we know him. He's a good friend. Well, not a good friend. He's a good friend's friend of ours. And I've met him. And I think his character is going to be something, well, was set to be something much bigger if they're making other films, whatever. And he's also in Catwoman, which they filmed in its entirety. It was all in the bag. And Hollywood or whoever the fuck it is saw it and went i'm sorry it's too pro black and they canned it they stopped was, it was that catwoman or batgirl uh, i think you might be right maybe batgirl whatever it was called but it was in yeah, the bag. i doubt they'll have made another catwoman after that and disaster he, he played a big part in it an important part in it and they just viewed it and they said nope it's too pro black and there's a couple of lines and sequences in this one the batman which is very like you you know, you white elitist shit kind of pushing that kind of agenda, but you know, not in a, any major major way. But apparently, yeah, this film filmed in the entirety, and they just they just canned it. And they, I think they said the official release was, oh, there's no real target audience for it. 
but according this to, to this guy that we know really the line came back he was told that it was too pro-black with anti-white kind of tones to it or something it's all a bit heavy isn't it in it film, really. no 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 this this thing isn't the batman isn't but see, well, it's it's i want to see it now then. if you just skim down the cast on imdb not a whole lot of non-white there yeah but i appreciate there there should be a guy a called dougie something or other who is white he's got a, f- a shocking face not funny yours is he <laughs> he's basically he's a good friend of darren's you know our boy darren Right, yeah. He doesn't get credited. Oh, great. Well, maybe that's fine. Right, so that was last year. Mm. So, what, what's everybody looking forward to this year? I've got one. Go, Go on. on. And it links to one of my last years. I'm looking forward to Renfield. Of course you are. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going all in with the cage. So... Redfield is the character from Dracula, yeah, the one who eats the spiders and stuff like yeah. that. It's driven mad. So yeah. what's he up to? So essentially, it, this is a kind of like a comedy horror fantasy thing where Renfield, played by Nicholas Holt, is at Dracula beck and call. Dracula being our good friend Nicholas, Nicholas Cage. Boy. Right. And it's essentially... My understanding of it from the trailer is that Nicholas Holt is trying to disengage from this very unhealthy relationship in modern day LA, I assume. Um, it sounds and it's... very much like Vampire's Kiss to me. <laughs> no, it won't be. No, I don't think it will be. <laughs> but it just looks very um, dumb and entertaining. Right. All right. Laurie, have you got one? I've got, have you got one? Yeah. Go on, I've you got go quite first. a few. Okay, I'll go first. Right. I'm going to admit it, Indy and the Dial of Destiny. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Sign me up, kid. I'm there. It's um, not directed by Spielberg. We've got, we've had a little bit of, um, what's it called? Trouble on set. Uh, I think Disney came in and they said they weren't quite happy with the ending or something. There was trouble with the shoot or whatever. Or the does Disney, sorry, does Disney own Indiana Jones now? Do they buy it with Star Wars? I think so. Yeah, yeah, it's gone mm. over there. Yeah, and they at the at the bequest of them, I think they asked to bring in a guy called James Mangold. Um, Sorry, they got rid of Steven Spielberg. Oh, actually, no, he's a producer. I don't don't listen to a word I'm saying. Well, there's I've been got, a little bit of trouble. Here, it's in the bag now. It is directed by James Mangold. Right, it's got Mads Mikkelsen in it. That's nice. David Wallabridge. Nice. David Bandada. Jones. Good cast. Yeah. So it's going to be fun, right? Well, hmm. I haven't seen the last two. So that's the... Wait a minute. So you haven't seen... Um... Crystal Skull. And The Last yeah, Crusade. You haven't Have seen you The Last Crusade? Not yet. You've got to watch that one. That one's real good fun. I was surprised it was as good as it hmm. was. And it's really good. Okay, I'll try Arguably, you could actually say it's one of the best. It is the best one, but it's not. Raiders is. No, nah, the one where he gets his hand burned on the thing. That's yeah, the that's the one. That's the one. All right. Well, we'll all be looking forward to that. Um, all right. Well, I um, I suppose my one is um, the next Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. We get another right. one of these. Hmm. Um, mm, I'd be interested to see where they take it because... I think the unique selling point was that, you know, we obviously have Miles Morales playing Spider-Man, but, you know, seeing all those different characters coming together. Can you do it again? Can you trap lightning in a bottle twice? Or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what it says about it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Not much, really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but the, most of the same characters seem to be coming back. So um, no, I'm sure it'll be all right. Yeah, I think it's earned definitely giving it a watch, right? That, the first one was brilliant. Yeah, yes. And I, I think, I, yeah, go on. I did bump into it. It's like it was on TV around Christmas time and there was like a synopsis of like all the, the Spider-Man films and they were kind of like putting bits together and just giving you little scenes and saying and this and that and that. 
and it does look really great i mean what you know kind of where marvel since marvel's really taken off there's there's some great stuff going on with like obviously the animation film that we watched together which was fucking brilliant and then and all this you know this other what animation film what are you talking about into the spider verse or something it's called spider-man into the what the fucking oh shut up but anyway yeah it seems really interesting all the stuff they, they're doing it's made me think shit i need to watch these spider-man films what the fuck have you do you think i've just been talking about yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you had a stroke yes and uh and some <laughs> Stroke and boss. All right, so yes, yeah, so my recommendation is Spider Man Across the Spider Verse Part Two. Part Very good. Two. <laughs> Remember that one that we saw though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, have you got any more? I do. I've got another one, um, which we have referenced uh, on previous uh, in the news on a previous episode. I'm looking forward to watching Cocaine Bear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, based on a true story. Indeed, cocaine yeah. bear. Yep, says it all, doesn't it? I don't think you need much more than that. The, the yeah, actual, think, yeah. The, the brief synopsis on IMDb is: an oddball group of cops, criminals, tourists, and teens converge on a Georgia forest where a five hundred pound black bear goes on a murderous rampage after unintentionally ingesting cocaine. <laughs> yeah, done. Wait, I'm shit's on my idea though: heroin hedgehog. It was like <laughs> it's really crap. Oh, go on, Laurie. What's yours? Uh, another one. I've got a few. Um, yeah, just another one. Okay. Really? Just another one. Now and then you can have another one in a minute. All right. Okay. So, um, Bo is afraid. So, what's his face? Air As- Astar, Ari Astar, Midsummer guy. Um, Her- 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 hereditary guy, ha- Ari right. Astra. Yeah, the director, you mean? Yes. Right. What so about Bo him? is afraid, starring Joaquin the Phoenix, and I think it's almost about Joaquin Phoenix. I think I don't know very much about it, but I know it's going to be interesting because Joaquin is definitely challenging himself over the past few years, and Ari Astra is. You know, he's got that kind of pushing the boat out with ideas and stuff. So, yeah, should be good. All right. Might be shit. All right. So, my next one is a little bit controversial. It's coming out in October, and it's called The Exorcist. Oh, yeah. Mm. So, now, this is the same guy who did the... David Gordon Green. That's it. So he's the guy who did all the kind of re- the Halloween stuff, the resurgence of Halloween. Yeah, we were lucky to have all of those, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, but what is interesting about this film is that Ellen Bernstein is reprising her role. Fucking um, hell. So yeah. they're basically doing what they did with Jamie Lee Curtis. They're doing with her. So they've seen yeah, the model I would suggest that Ellen Bernstein doesn't have to do this. Um, you know, she's her career is pretty good. As I might suggest that, like Jamie Lee Curtis, didn't have to do it, but they've got blackmail on her, and <laughs> now she has to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what it's all about. The Exorcist is a follow-up to the original and the 1973 original only, and will reportedly unfold the first of a trilogy. Mm. There we go. Exactly what, what they did up. with Halloween. Except they're all the same. There was, I mean, surely they need to be slightly different. Well, Alien, I, think, aliens, I think we can aliens. expect what we're going to get from this. But yeah, I mean, I suppose like the entity of like this demon disguising as the devil. Pad, 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 pad. Yeah, I'll watch it. <laughs> controversial that one, James. Very controversial. <laughs> <laughs> have you got any more? Uh, I'm going to go for one more. Um, and as the action correspondent for the movie Lighthouse, yes, he is. John Wick Chapter Four. Yeah, Are we don't care what it's about. Already? Yeah, don't care what it's about. Not bothered about the plot line particularly. Yeah. Um, but Keanu Reeves is John Wick. Yeah, yes, please. You, you I saw. How... Oh, sorry. That's right. You go. Do you know how I got introduced to John Wick? Do you remember uh, me? 
No, over I got conf- a prawn volivon. No, I got confused when, when, when um, and I thought. When, you remember when we re- reviewed that awful film, John Carter from Mars? Oh, I yes. thought that was it. Oh, and yes. I spent the whole film watching it. Going, when is he going to Mars? The whole <laughs> film watching it. Oh, yes, because it sucks you in. You can't yeah, turn it off. Great film. One of our one of our friends, Jasper, has a friend called John Wick. Shit. See. Yeah. Oh, See, Jasper's a powerhouse. Fit, he was part of um, what's that superb film that he was part of? Bat Bat. Reviewed. Bat Bat. No. no, sorry, what? Pontypool. Pontypool, Pontypool. brilliant film. Yeah. If anyone's listening and hasn't seen it yet, go and watch Pontypool. A real little treat, that one. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Now. Right. Well, that's it. I, I, the, the other, there's another Evil Dead film coming out. You know, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Nothing Pop ready to June Part 2 is coming out. Um, Are you ready Napoleon. to go back to Arrakis? No, I'm not, because it was really boring. It was, it was all right. It went um, on for ages. It did a little bit, but it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. It's you know, okay. It's a yeah. lot of music, it's a lot of sound. You it takes know. itself a bit too seriously. You've got your bag of revels. Oh, you feel a bit sick. Loads of noise finishes. Oh, that was all right. Um, Napoleon, Ridley Scott's Napoleon, starring Joaquin Phoenix. Again. Oh, no. It's not going to be like The Duelist, is it? Yes, that's exactly oh, what it's going to be God. like. See, you guys didn't like The Duelist, did you? <laughs> no, we did not. Just such a couple of... Honestly, you can't... <laughs> Maybe you should do a spin-off podcast, you and Connor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Connor <laughs> would be all over that shit. Definitely. Right. Any more, Mr. Wise? Um... Well, I did have a, (laughs) this is tradition of ours. I think ever since we've been podcasting for however many years, Uzumaki is still, is being delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed, albeit it's a TV series, animated TV series. Why are we talking about the spiral here? Yeah, I keep looking out for it. Uzumaki, it was supposed to have come out last year in October. It's been delayed. four years ago. Again. So, you know, fingers crossed we see that, um, come to the fold also actually panos cosmatos uh he's currently working on his latest film uh it, when he talks about Sorry, mandy, who is this man panos cosmatos the guy who did mandy beyond the black rainbow okay uh, episode seven of guillermo de toro's amazing series um because basically in that series by the way he just gets his favorite directors in to do that one specific episode and he presents it like alfred hitchcock right at the beginning he just sets the scene and then this is the Second World War. These are Nazis, just like that. <laughs> but you can't understand a fucking word he's saying. It's like he's a way over there. I'm there way the fucking out I'm a really fat bastard, and I'm <laughs> fucking Spanish. And I can't a fucking out fair. And then the film starts. It's really good. <laughs> but Panos Cosmatos does episode seven, and who have we got in it, Wyndham? Who's in episode seven? Nicholas Cage. Peter of Weller. Peter oh, of Weller, and he oh. is amazing. And Panos Kazmatos is Sorry, a who's massive... Peter Weller? Shut up. Um, Panos Kazmatos is, it... is a massive fan of Buckaroo Banzai. I'm thinking of Paul Weller. Who's Peter Weller? You always think of Paul <laughs> Weller, bro. <laughs> Do I need to check? Are you being serious? Peter yeah. Weller is Robocop. I know. And, and Buckaroo well, Banzai. I don't know all these things. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, so Panos Kazmatos does episode seven of that, so you've got to check it out. It is spectacular anyway so he's he's working on his next project which is called bear with me callers bear with me (laughs) call it's something like that it's something like that um oh fuck it's called sorry uh necron necrocosm necrocosm and he said about Mandy that that was a bit of a crowd pleaser, and he feels that this is going to be potentially even more of a crowd pleaser, but with us, it's a sci fi kind of mm. hoo ha. I don't know if I'd, I'd describe Mandy as a crowd pleaser. pleaser. I guess it depends oh, on the yeah, crowd. Oh, yeah, it was. Right? Jesus. <laughs> oh. All right. So, got our 2020 leaderboard here. So, does anyone remember um, what topped our leaderboard this year? 2022. Yeah. Uh, it's probably something shit. <laughs> oh. What was it? Like was Shawshank it? Redemption, no, was I... it that? <laughs> I don't remember. Okay, so in third place, 
with 74.6%, we had Amibaba. Mm. All right, okay. Enjoyed that. That was good. That was I enjoyed good. it very much. Yeah. That's one of those films when you start watching it, you're not quite sure what's going to happen, and then yeah. you're not quite sure what's going to happen all the way through, really. Yeah. Sweaty, sexy, great it wasn't soundtrack. Sec- well, what oh, bit was it so sexy? Se- it's sexy! <laughs> Is it? Like, oh, girl, yeah, man. I was chubbed up oblivion. Ooh. All right. In number s- in second place with 76% was a razor head. Okay, yeah. Was it? Ah. Oh. So happy with these two so far, Laurie? Yeah, I am actually. Yeah. <laughs> Both black and white. Yeah. Mm. Um, and again, um not quite sure what that's about, really. <laughs> yeah, you do. Did you were you chubbed to oblivion in that one as well? Sorry. Uh, there's a chubby bit. It's less sexy though, isn't it? It's less sexy. When, 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 what was that woman dancing behind her? If, if I'm just oh, about I'm to, pop, well, yeah, she's actually got certain allure. Yeah, but when she starts stamping on his semen, I'm like, uh, well, so you're I'm gonna, gonna chub back. You're gonna blow your load with number one. Can it was under the skin? With yeah. Oh, brilliant. We did well this That's year. Pretty good this year, yeah. Well it's done, a patronizer boy. us, you twat. <laughs> you're, so, you're getting good at this, James. <laughs> and does anyone want to take a guess at what our bottom three were? Buckaroo Banzai. Yeah, that was uh, um, 15th place. There's two below it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Uh, that was just below uh, Buckaroo Bonzo. And who knows what our worst film of 2022 was that we reviewed. Oh, it's definitely going to be a suggestion that I made. Think of the worst board game ever. Oh, my God. That's awful. That was Wyndham that brought that one in. Quintet. That one's called Quintet. Oh, oh. my God. That's <laughs> so that shit. That was poke. It's complete cum. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> Christ. All right, well, here is the 2023. So um, before we go, we are, need to choose our uh, ball to. Um, and also, I asked you all to come up with a little resolution yes. for 2023. So, Wyndham, do you want to kick us off? What's your resolution? My resolution is to honour my commitment to the movie Lighthouse. So when we set a date, it's going to have to be the world coming to an end for me to cancel <laughs> oh, it. Oh, don't be like that. And I'm gonna because we, I on reflection, I think there were times when it didn't. I came without movies. I did last year was not my best year showing up for the movie Lighthouse. So this year, back Aww. on the wagon, I'm gonna Love honor it. my commitment to it. Nice, good stuff. Uh, I, feel, I definitely feel there's more pepper in my pencil, um, uh, for <laughs> this year. So I'll, I'll do the same as you. Resolution though, oh, I really don't know. Um, check sell by dates, I suppose, something like that. Oh, good. Well, um, my new flatmate, Bendy Wendy, has um never seen a single film in her entire life. Fuck um, what? So she has What's asked her name? me, she has Bendy asked, Wendy, she's an acrobat or for um, yeah, so her name's Wendy and she's Bendy. Wow, hmm. and she I hasn't seen a film. So let me explain how much he hasn't seen a film. She's asked me to take oh, her Oh, it's not the... like an impairment, is it? She's not like... Take her through the journey of film. Um, so every time I present a film, she hasn't seen it. So we have watched Psycho. We have watched Alien. We have watched... Oh, what else have we not watched? Wow. Uh, Candyman. Um, we are going to be watching... Um, I don't know if she's ready for everything, anything, and everything all at once. Yeah, but we are we are gonna be doing. I think we'll do Kramer versus Kramer next. But she hasn't seen a single film. You and should. Are you actually? You've got, like show the, you've got to show her the Wizard of it's Oz. Brilliant. Yeah, and and what I'm not gonna show that shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show a film dialogue. <laughs> it's like it's like rewriting history. It's great. You got to show her the Wizard of Oz. You've got Why? to because it's like. Shaping our mind. That's, That's for that. one of the ones, right? Is the it? Birds, yeah, Hitchcock stuff. Nah, we've all. done Psycho, we've sorted. <laughs> we haven't got time to do the wall. 
<laughs> That's and bizarre. She, and she will never, ever know of Blade Runner. Well, no, you could just, like, get your pillow and you could put it on for her, couldn't you? <laughs> no, she's, she'll never know it even exists. You're missing a trick here. You should have, like, Bendy Wendy, you know, 30 second. Well, I thought about that, really, but I could be bothered. Feature. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, so um, I will tell you about how she's getting on as, as the year progresses. Brilliant, yeah, oh, keep us good. posted. Ben. Ah, but what was good... Uh, I was I've, I've I had back quite a bad cough the other day, and I was doing aforementioned coughing, and she mm. went, "Ah, oh, you're like you're like that guy from um, Alien." That's best. Oh, right like when um, yeah. oh Jesus, what's his name? Um, it Ash. is the War Doctor, John Hurt. John Hurt. Ash. No, it's not Ash. Ash is the um, the rebel. Is Ash the robot? Oh. Charles Ian Holmes. Cross. Ian Holmes. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, I've, met, I've taken a management decision. Um, this too in advance is way too complicated and it, it ruins the whole point of what uh, Jeopardy. So. Okay. Who, back to the old ways. Yeah, back to the old ways. Old okay. ways are best. Yeah. So, um, whose turn was it? Who can remember who chose last time? So we reviewed Buckaroo Bansai, which is definitely which one was of my one of yours, and mine was under the skin. So you chose. Was, so James, you chose. And right. then before that, we had Prince of Darkness, which is my suggestion, and Suspiria. Yeah. Okay. Which so is, it must be which, me then. So it's you choosing, yeah. So who's <laughs> turn to choose? That is it. It's Laurie's turn to choose. Right. That deductive. Are you sure? Yeah. Did he do, yep. did yeah. He do Halloween? Yeah, but that was oh. his his episode, wasn't it? Oh, actually, wait a minute. Yeah, so that oh, was yeah, my episode. Did. So that oh, okay. That was yours. So, what was it's your turn. That? so it's my turn. Boom. Go. Okay, so a ball has spilled out onto Ooh. my loins. Oh, I'm gonna have a look at it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, it's not another lump again, is it? Well, no. I don't know if it's a number six. Or a number nine. Is there not a little line underneath I, it? To know shall I, shall I oh, yeah, it? sorry, I didn't spot the line underneath it. Of course I said fucking line. Or... <laughs> <laughs> it's a number nine. Well, I'll tell you what. Lines, no, see this how it's the new year, window. You can choose which category you want from the two choices. Oh, wonderful. Ooh, I like that. So, the choices are... Two thousand and six. Shit. Dunbar's attacks. Yes. Yeah. And well, I think he's done two thousand and six as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on a minute. Are you sure? Yeah. What was that? That's just two. That's two. Another. Choose another ball. Yeah, I had to rewrite all the scripts and stuff, so these might be a bit out of date. All right, let's go for. Oh, I don't know if this is a number one or a number 10. <laughs> number 10. The movies. Cool. I'll pick that one. Thanks, mate. Right. Oh, what, so, what, um, was this, what was the header? Sorry. Disaster movies. Disaster so, we're going to find, choose the films and get back to you in a couple of minutes. So we are gonna choose 
are two disaster movies. With them, you get to call the shots. Uh, so I am going to offer you my first offering, which I offer the Poseidon Adventure. Ooh, an oldie, but a goodie. Will Shelley Duvall make it? Is it Shelley Duvall? God, bloody hell, I haven't watched that for many, many, many years. There you go. Uh, it's like okay. from Airwolves in it, right? I don't know. I think so. Santini from yeah, Santini. Oh, what? He plays a cop. Mm, it could be. All right, come on, Lori. What's your second, first choice? That's really quite hard. Disaster movies is very hard. Is the black hole a disaster movie? Not really, because he decides to go in there. <sighs> um, Soul and Green, that's not. Disaster movie. Um, Gravity is an exceptionally good. Are you going to just talk through yeah, a load yeah. of films? That aren't <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. I got one. I got one. The Grey. Okay, so it's Ridley Scott again. It's starring Liam Nielsen. I recommended it actually. We had the Ridley Scott uh, film choices, but I'm going to say The Grey. It's really good. Now look at his hands when they be trying to do some mind control <laughs> shit. <laughs> Okay. All right. And my second choice is Sharknado. Fuck off. <laughs> okay. Laurie, you've got some tough competition here. Eh? I have, haven't I? Um... Oh, God. Okay, the original. Oh, do have we done Day of the Triffids? That's no. not really a disaster movie, is it? The Day the Earth Stood Still, I believe, is a disaster movie. The original. That's not. Yeah, it is. What with the alien? Yeah. That's not. Yeah, it is. Well, it's not. Oh come on, yeah, it is. Look. Disaster, it is. It's not an invasion. Movie. Mm, okay. Well, I suppose the oh, to be fair, the grey probably isn't either. Then they they have well, like a disaster. At least, at least the grey starts with a plane crash. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Not Cloverfield. No. Titanic. No. It's okay, hard. Then. How about the towering inferno? <laughs> oh yeah, with like heart to heart guy. Come on. So oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It's hard. Ah, okay. It is a disaster, isn't it? The mist. That's a disaster for everyone. The yeah, mist turns it's, up. It's, well, you have the mist. It is. It happens. It's... Yeah, but like floods happen. And this is the mist. And obviously a fu- it's a fucked up malevolent mist, isn't it? The <laughs> mist. Stephen King. Really, it's an amazing end and it will, le- it will literally, you will fall off your chair. We've all seen it. Oh. But yeah, it's good film. I haven't seen it. The Mist. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the from 2007? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm just reading the short synopsis on IMDb. It sounds like a disaster movie. <laughs> it is, look! If it was a Not movie. a disaster movie. In the so science. I'm going to pick... I can't bring myself to pick Sharknado. Oh, really? I've never seen it. I thought it would be a nice excuse to watch it. No, I've never seen it either. Oh, but now I'm going to seem like I'm being swayed. I'm going to pick the grey. Okay. Not another Ridley Scott and fucking <laughs> town. <laughs> oh, I, think, I think it's going to be terrible, Sharknado. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're going to go old school with Poseidon Adventures. No! <laughs> well, at least they are both. Oh, no, the grey isn't, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> mist is more a disaster Sharknado movie than the grey. All right, so that's two films to kick us off. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so we will see you in January, even though it is January. So we're going to get our skates on. We are going to have 12 episodes. Yeah, 12 episodes in, man. 13. Film knowledge. Yeah. Great. All right, then. Well, um, yeah, well, I'll see you all later, guys. Take it. Oh, that was one one. hour, 36 minutes of pure. Oh, 26 minutes. Of pure what? 